Hello and welcome to another one of uh, my tutorial series. Um, I am Bridgebinner and today we are going to be talking about how to make teleporter closets, which is a, a something that is both uh, easy, uh, an easy concept, but also not easy. Uh, a lot of people struggle with it um, and uh, there's a few kind of like nuances to, to setting them up well um, so that they um, operate consistently um, and in a, in, a, in a way that you want. Uh, this is going to be a UDMF GZ Doom based one. Uh, we're not going to be covering off setting them up in Boom or Vanilla. Um, uh, there are other resources um, are covering that off uh, that exist already uh, if you want it. So, <coughs> sorry, we'll be uh, yeah we'll be looking at various ways to to implement them in uh, the UDMF format for GZ Doom. So we'll start off with uh, a room where we're going to land in and. Um, Every teleporter closet needs a teleport spot. Now in GZ Doom there are three types. Teleport destination is your standard type. What that means is the first available floor, um, uh, it, will, it will land on there um, and that floor can move. So if you're on a lift and the lift is going up the teleport, and you use one of these teleport spots, the monsters will always appear on that lift. And um, then there is the Z height, which uh, is if you want them to spawn in at a specific height, it will always spawn at that height. That will not move relative to any moving surfaces either. Uh, great for if you want, say, Caco Demons to appear up in the air, um, coming out of a window perhaps, um, or you wanted to create a rain of pinkies for some reason. Um, yeah, you could, the monsters will appear at a height, whatever is specified by the Z value here. And start there when they teleport through and then the other one is a slightly more complex one it's z height and gravity so what this does is the monsters will start at that specified z height but then what the engine will do is check where the first floor is and this will include 3d floors so this is great for if you want monsters to appear on 3d floors that are moving very niche uh usage um but very very handy and and, and, and has like a you know, a built-in check for where is that first um, where is that first uh, surface that an enemy can appear. Um, so those are the three landing types. Um, I'm not going to get into making moving 3D floor lifts that accommodate teleport. That can be a tutorial for another day. Uh, so what we'll just do is use the Z height and the standard. Um, so that's the basics of the landing point. Now. Obviously UDMF, you can tag things, so this is unique to this format, um, or similar you know, ZDoom based formats. Um, so we'll give them each a separate tag, we've got tag 1 on the standard teleport and tag 2 on the other one. Next step, make your closet. So there are a few different ways to do this and there are some ultra efficient um, uh, teleport closet styles that are uh, if you want, like very concerned about instantly uh, teleporting monsters happening as soon as you trigger something, you can use them. Uh, we're not going to go into that today. Um, there is already a very good tutorial on Doom World by Nine Inch Heels covering off that in very high detail. And um, also, those methods are more specific to Boom and Vanilla because um, there are other ways to create instantaneously teleporting monsters in uh, UDMF GZ Doom format, which is by using spawn points. Um, which we will touch on uh, after this. Um, so, closet style. I'm a big fan of the chevron setup. Um, I think I first saw it in Douse Vault. Uh, Sunder uses it a lot. It is a, a good kind of fail-proof, but also easy to set up system. So, you, you'll see a lot of uh, early teleport closets will be rectangular, straight face, single teleport line. You put your monsters in here. Oops. Maybe we want a few more. Like so. So the problem with this kind of setup, this it moves forward, triggers the teleport. It's over here. Teleport is now blocked. Second of just behind him can't teleport. What that it then does is get stuck over here. Probably should have turned it off. Um and that, that imp can often permanently get stuck there and will not, it'll just kind of bobble around and not trigger that line and all of a sudden you've got a closet that isn't properly emptying. Even worse, say that guy teleports off, 
This guy, it's still blocked. He can't teleport through, so he blocks there. All of a sudden, these next imps cannot cross the line, and you've actually blocked your teleport closet. Very common mistake. Very easy to have happen if you're if you're not uh, familiar with um, you know the way that these lines work. So a monster has to get half of its hitbox over the line for it to trigger. So how to make your closets reliable? Um, first one. Increase the teleport lines. Oops. More lines, more chances to activate. You know, particularly uh, with um, UDMF, there's no limit on lines. You can spam these. Hundreds of lines, maybe not hundreds. Um, I, I like four. Four is kind of the number that I use a lot. Um, but you can still get a bottling. So, let's say if you've got hundreds of monsters teleporting in. You can still end up with this bottling of enemies not crossing lines and just cramming into each other. The way to get around that, and I've almost never found these to fail, these are very consistent, these designs, is to create what, you know, a chevron shape. Um, like so. So what that does is not only provides two lines, so doubling the chance, you've got a split line. They're now on an angle. It means a monster walking sideways will trigger it. Um, so when the, if, it's get, if they get bottled up, this enemy can kind of res, you know, rattle around, it will trigger the lines. Um, and like I said, I find these very, very consistent, this design, this particular shape. Um, you know, uh, Bastion of Chaos has over 4,000 enemies and I've never had a closet not empty properly. It might be the odd straggler. Um, but definitely not getting jammed up closets. So we're gonna we're gonna our field of imps, um, and again because this is UDMF, uh, we're gonna talk about using dormant enemies as the way to set this up. Um, there is a flag um, dormant, which means that the monster is not active. Um, but you can activate that um, through a script or a line action uh, very easily. So you make them all dormant, and this means you can you can. Um, link your sound to them um, and not have to worry about them activating early. Um, so that's another key concept of a teleporter. Probably going about this a little bit um, backwards, but it's, it's the way that you activate them and they, the monsters need to hear the player. So classic way is join the sectors. Still very viable, still very good. That means that sound generated in that sector over there will transfer over to where the imps are. They'll hear it and they'll activate forward um maybe you don't want that to happen as soon as the player enters and you know maybe there's some other enemies to fight how you manage this in boom is different but in udmf you make them dormant even though they're dormant they will still hear the player they don't need to hear the sound after they've been activated give them a tag you can now control when they wake up um let's just give the teleport lines a tag so we we tag that one with one Line action 70 is teleport. Teleport destination tag one. You do not need to use the sector tag. That is irrelevant in UDMF. Um, you want to make it a repeatable action so that they trigger multiple times. And then monster walks over. Do not use monster bumps. They will bump lines through impassable lines, uh, which means if you have a pair of closets and you link them together like that because you want the sound to propagate through, put an impassable line between them like so that means you know these imps won't wander off over here accidentally so you want these to be uh, lost souls there yeah. if you use a monster bump action they can actually uh, actually bump through uh, impassable lines they can use press U through impassable lines walk over is the best way um, in my experience we'll give these the same Z height, uh, sorry, saying tag, yep, tag three. They're also dormant. Check sound propagation. Very handy. Green, green, going through. Very nice. And what we'll do is we'll link this one to the Z height teleporter so the lost souls come in at that height, which is the kind of thing you would use it for. Give me that tag of two. That is now tag. That is the. That is a, that's how you link your teleport line to its destination, just through that tag number. 
not the line identification uh, identification tag that is for different things target teleport destination tag other good thing about udmf you can have multiple teleport landings with the same tag so you cannot do this in boom or vanilla so say you wanted you had this big pool of of monsters you didn't really care which ones came through where you just wanted them all to warp in quickly and come in in this, this kind of area give them multiple teleport spots it will choose randomly which one to spawn them in if one is blocked it'll choose another one really good way to make really fast clearing closets is just dump a whole lot of teleport spots um uh, so we'll do that with the imps those are all linked so you see they are now linked to all three each line and each one of these is linked to all of the teleport lines there um so yeah now you have a linked closet sound wise we have their teleport spots and we have um two separate two separate uh clusters coming in next step is how are you going to activate them so in boom and vanilla you often see shoot switches in fights where the the mapper needs the monsters to teleport in at a certain point so that forces the player to shoot to activate or progress and that causes the monsters to hear them you can do that in UDMF uh, for GZ do that's fine uh, it's still a perfectly viable method but there are other ways to do that but we'll demonstrate with uh with just shooting and how this is going to work uh, to start with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a switch so say you've got a uh, an arena I'm going to have a switch give that a lovely switch texture Okay, so we're gonna switch. So that could be linked to you guys do this through a a, a line action or a script. We're not going to go into scripting today, um, but you can do this um, through either a, a script execute. Uh, but for this one, uh, we're just going to use a thing activate. Oh, sorry, it's activate thing in um, the editor. It's thing activate in scripting. And then I think that was three. Yes, so you see that is now linked to all of these enemies, like so. I want to give that a player presses use. So when I press that button, they will all activate. That won't wake them up though. That won't take them off their sleeping state. You'll need to shoot. So we'll um, assume we've got this. Uh, fuck this up. Um, we'll play a start something. We've linked our closets so that's still linked uh note that if you move ah, i didn't i didn't, un uh, I didn't unlink you can these can unlink if you move or alter the closets um things can unlink so always check that if you're using a, a linked sector that it stays joined which you can tell when i highlight that the one on the left hand side is highlighting as well that can break apart uh, when you do certain things so if your closets aren't working that is one of the first things to check is that you haven't broken your sound links um so yeah we'll jump in um and hopefully this works i might just brighten the room up um, two. these are all the same heights sound propagation double check all coming through yes it is very good and we got d running lovely so shoot monsters aren't active Thing activate now they are we'll do it the other way around we'll press the button i haven't shot so they're not awake now they are so you see that the imps are teleporting on all three of the spots just choosing it's just the teleport ones just choosing which one to come through notice they've come through a lot faster than the lost souls um and the lost souls are appearing at height um Closets are empty. They've all, they've all cleared. Easy. Nice and consistent. Um, actually, I will, we will go into a little bit of scripting here, I think. Um, because uh, I would like to talk about the sound alert. I'm going to include... So after your scripting, you always have to start every 
script library with this it includes the common ICS, which means that all the base kind of like uh, terms, I guess, are part of, uh, registered. Yeah, so script one void bracket bracket. So, say you're worried that the player might not have shot, and you you didn't want to rely on them having a dumb map, like you know, worry about pacifisting areas that you that you, you don't want to have happen. So now these are these are now separated. Actually, no, we'll do, we'll do we'll do this we'll do this way first. We'll keep them separated. Holy shit! <laughs> we're getting a seventy-three raid while we're recruiting a tutorial. Well, we're gonna leave that in. Um. And what you can do is use what's called a noise alert. Uh, thanks for the follow. Um, thank you for the raid. Sorry, I'll recognize the raid in a second. I'm just currently recording a tutorial. Um, so you can link a noise alert to a map spot. Literally called noise alert. Target ID 0, emitter ID 0 means that... Oh, sorry. You don't need a map spot for this, this particular one. This will emit the noise from the player. And... Um, it will resonate through and propagate through any linked sectors. You can also add that thing activate code to here as well, like so. So that's going to play the noise alert and then activate the monsters. We'll change this to a script. Script one. So what we got? Play presses use. That's all looking good. Let's compile without errors. Save. Oops, I got that up. Now this should, in theory, play that noise alert and then activate these guys, who are all three. Let's have a look. Didn't have to shoot. They activated. So that noise alert was as if I had shot. Now, now teleporting in. Removes the ability from players to pacifist your fights. Um, in terms of activating teleporter puzzles, yeah, they can still weave around and dodge and not not shoot. But um, you know, if you're wanting to make sure that things activate, that is a way to do it. Uh, um, that ensures that it removes the ability to 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 skip it uh, uh, as the player. Um, yeah, so I think um, I think that's probably enough for the the basic uh, teleporter closet tutorial. Um, covered off how to set up the initial links um good teleport closet shape closet shapes the, the chevron shape um oh one other thing i will cover off if you have a really big closet and you really want to make sure they clear you can just add more lines further back uh, i've done that before um particularly good for things like mancubus which which can be a bit finickety or arachnotrons you know they're big hit boxes the teleport landings they've blocked for a long time um so if you're really worried just just spam lines um and so we talked about that we talked about the various types of teleporter landing um how to activate them how to link um to make sure that they do activate a little bit of talk about noise alerts um and the only other other thing i wanted to point out before we end this um teleporter closet positioning matters so you'll notice that i've got the chevron pointing at the play space if i move this over here let's make sure this is still linked it is indeed What's going to happen is I'm also going to walk that way because I always walk towards the player, and I've seen this mistake. Already. So let's 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 test this and see how this goes. I'm predicting it won't go well. Get a few teleporting in, so they are bouncing around, but you particularly lost souls. Very slow. We've got half the imps. Oh, lost souls. What's going to cross? There we go. There we go. So you can see you can see the enemies in the closet clustering at the opposite end of where the teleport lines are. So about maybe sixty percent of the enemies have come through. Um, so very important to make sure that your closet is pointing at the play space, and that's another reason why these chevrons are good because they indicate where you want the enemies to walk towards and where the player should be at the time of fight triggering. Um, so yeah i think we've um yeah like i said we've covered off um the kind of core principles for some pretty pretty decent and consistent teleport closets um hopefully this is helpful 
Um, and uh, there are some slightly more advanced concepts that I will cover off uh, in a separate tutorial, which will include monster spawning, um, so, so cold spawning in, um, using the Z height with gravity teleporter, and um, we might explore some things like uh, making a lift, a moving lift fight, um, and because and the different teleport um, landing types will be um, well shown off in that. Uh, so I thank thank you for watching, and I uh, hope that was helpful, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.